All right, welcome back, eighth graders. So far, we've talked about how the Earth moves in space through rotation and revolution. Uh, we also talked a little bit about how different parts of the Earth receive different amounts of sunlight and how that influences the kind of weather that they get, whether it's hot and humid all the time or cold all the time. Um, that's all affected by their position on the Earth and how close they are to the equator or to the poles. Now we'll be getting into um, the tilting of the Earth and what effect that has on the weather that we get throughout the year. Here we go. Let's talk about the seasons then, right? So why do we have seasons? Why is it hot during one time of the year and cold during another time and so on? Uh, and so here we see the sort of four main stages uh, or placements of the Earth around the sun throughout the year. Um, and right now, when I'm recording this, it is uh, July, and so we are just past this sort of June solstice here. So this June solstice happens on June 21st, June 22nd, somewhere around there. Uh, and at that point, the northern hemisphere, if you see it here, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. Um, and so this means that the northern hemisphere is getting a lot of direct sunlight, and it's hotter, right? Of course. June solstice signals summer. Summer is the hottest season for us. Um, and the southern hemisphere, though, notice that they are tilted more away from the sun. So for them, it's actually the beginning of their winter. So while it's our summer solstice, it would be considered their winter solstice. Um, so that might seem kind of weird, but that's how it works. They're getting less direct sunlight, so it's colder. Then, as the year progresses, about three months later, we get to September and we get to the September equinox. And at this point, the Earth is not tilted towards or away from the sun, sort of uh, at, an, at an angle going sideways. And so both the northern and southern hemispheres are getting the same amount of sunlight. Uh, and so we get uh, equal parts day and night, 12 hours of day, 12 hours of night, uh, hence the name equinox, right? 12 and 12, it's equal parts day and night. Then, continuing on, we get to December, three months later, and uh, the other solstice. So this is the other extreme uh, where we, the Northern Hemisphere um, in June was tilted at its farthest point towards the sun. Now in December, it's tilted at its farthest point away from the sun. And so for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's, we're getting less direct sunlight, it's cold, it's the beginning of winter. However, for the Southern Hemisphere, for South America and Australia and Africa, they are experiencing summer now. December signals the beginning of summer. So uh, if you spend Christmas in Australia, it's gonna be warm. Santa Claus will be riding a surfboard and uh, wearing shorts. Then, uh, going three months later into March, we get a similar situation as in September. Equal parts, day and night, we're not really tilted towards or away from the sun. Both hemispheres get the same amount of energy, right? Uh, and notice that our axis is kind of tilted at an angle, and I have this question up here. The axis is always tilted at what angle, right? This is the reason why we have seasons, right? It's because of this tilt that never changes. What angle is it tilted at? Take a guess, what do you think? Did you guess 23.5 degrees? If you did, well done. The major reason our planet experiences seasons has to do with the fact that the Earth is tilted on its axis. Remember, the axis is an imaginary line that runs through the north and south poles of the planet. The Earth spins around on its axis. Well, our axis is tilted 23.5 degrees. It is always tilted in the same direction. So as it goes around the sun, there are times when the upper half of the Earth is tilted towards the sun and other times when it is tilted away. This tilt affects the way the rays of sunlight strike the Earth. When the planet is tilted towards the sun, the rays are more vertical and therefore strike the surface more directly than when tilted away. If it's tilted away from the sun, like we said, it gets less direct sunlight uh, and therefore colder weather. Okay, so common misconception. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Although the Earth can be at different distances from the sun because of its elliptical or ellipsoid orbit, 
This does not cause the changes in season. It turns out that the Earth is actually farthest from the sun during our summer months. And so if you look at this diagram here, we see that, sure enough, the farthest point that Earth is away from the sun, which is called the aphelion, is on July 4th, right? Historically, pretty hot day during the year, right? Uh, it's the dead middle of summer, pretty much. July 4th, and it, we're farthest away from the sun. And on the other end, at the perihelion, our closest point to the sun, that occurs on January 3rd, right? It's winter time, it's generally pretty cold. Um, so it's not the distance, right? It's, it's the tilting of, of the axis and either tilting towards or away from the sun throughout the year. That is what causes the seasons, not the distance. Although the distance does have a minor factor. If you were in Australia on January 3rd, um, not only would you be tilted towards the sun at that point, because it would be your summertime, but the fact that you were a little bit closer um, to the sun, you are going to experience a slightly more, uh, you know, more extreme temperatures. Same goes for the southern hemisphere in July. Uh, so they do get a little bit more cold or more heat uh, because of this, but not so much for us. Okay, and so uh, lastly here, uh, when the seasons are occurring um, and we are tilting to, towards or away from the sun, um, you will actually be able to see the angle of the sun change. The height of the sun above the horizon will vary with the season. And so it's usually at its lowest angle in the winter and highest angle or more direct angle in the summer. So here in June, we see that it is coming from the east. It goes way direct, pretty much directly overhead before coming down here uh, to the west. And notice too that it is still at an angle. It's not directly overhead. You have to be at the equator to have it going straight from east to west. Because we're in the northern hemisphere, it's always going to be sort of tilting towards the south. When we get into the equinoxes, it rises due east and it, and it still tilts towards the you know southern end uh, a little bit, but then it uh, comes back and we get 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night, which we don't see. And lastly, in the winter, notice the angle now is really low, really low on the horizon, it's still rising in the east, but it stays low and then sets pretty early. So. In June, this is when we have our longest days. The June solstice being the longest day of the year. You've got around 16 hours of day for us and about 8 hours of night. Uh, whereas the December solstice, December 21st, um, you've got your shortest day of the year. Uh, and this is when we get maybe you know the opposite, more like 8 hours of daylight and 16 hours of night, something like that. Uh, so, And that, that becomes more extreme as you get towards the poles. Uh, if you're at the North or South Pole, during one of the solstices, you may experience no sunlight for 24 hours, or you may experience nothing but sunlight for 24 hours. It all depends on uh, where you're at at which time of the year. Here's a video showing what it might be like if you lived in the Arctic. This is what's known as the midnight sun. April in the Arctic, but already the sun never sets. But further south, the sun works its magic in more gradual, familiar ways. Okay, so that'll end it for section one um, and get ready to take the quiz. Uh, go to the link on my website and I'll see you tomorrow.